In this screencast, we are going to talk about how to put together dynamic balance equations. These are the same kinds of equations that you're going to be, that you've been using uh, since the beginning of the chemical engineering curriculum, if you're a chemical engineer. So the general form of a balance equation is that you have the rate of accumulation equals to the rate of the influx minus the rate of the efflux plus the rate of generation minus the rate of consumption for any um, process variable that you're trying to keep track of. Now the way these terms play out as you're actually writing down the equations, your rate of accumulation is going to be looking something like a time derivative. The rate of influx and the rate of efflux, these together would be like net flow. The rate of generation minus the rate of consumption, these together would be something more like net reaction. usually. So this master equation can refer to any quantity that you want to do bookkeeping on. So we could be talking about total mass, total moles, moles of a particular component, energy, momentum, entropy, etc. So here we'll look at specific examples for component moles and energy. So for a component mole balance, you would have the rate of accumulation of moles in the system is equal to the rate of moles entering the system, minus the rate of the moles leaving the system, plus the rate of generation of moles by the reaction, minus the rate of consumption of moles by another reaction. And so the way that would work out as you're actually writing down this equation, your time derivative of the number of moles of component I is equal to the molar flow rate in of that component, minus the molar flow rate out of that component, Sometimes we write these molar flow rates as the mole fraction xi times the total molar flow rate in the, um, of the streams that we're talking about. And the net rate of reaction would be a sum of all the rates of reaction. If we have uh, j equals 1 to capital N reactions, then, the, then each term would be the stoichiometric coefficient of that component for that particular reaction, so component I for reaction J, times the rate of reaction J. And that will be your component mole balance, as an example. As another example that we'll often consider in this class is the thermal energy balance. So in the thermal en energy balance, you have the rate of accumulation of, a, of thermal energy, which is the time derivative of the internal energy equals to the convective uh, rate of convective heat transfer entering the system. A lot of times that would be some mass flow rate in times some specific enthalpy minus the rate of convective heat transfer leaving the system, which would be some mass flow rate out times some specific enthalpy plus the nate rate of heat generation by reaction. So it's your delta H hat of reaction times your rate of reaction, rate of reaction. Of course, there might be multiple reactions, and so you'd have to have a sum term there too. And the net rate of heat transfer through boundaries of the system, that would be like heat flow in, and also shaft work. Now note in this class that we are taking as a convention shaft work being positive here in this system. And by the way, uh, your time derivative du dt is often expressed as the mass of your system times the constant volume heat capacity of the system times the time derivative of the temperature. So while these equations are fundamental, that means they're derived from first principles, they're often what, we're call, what are called phenomenological terms in the equations. So these terms are, are constitutive relationships. They're not necessarily fundamental, but they have wide applicability, and they've been verified experimentally. For example, something like a reaction kinetic expression. So you might have something like your reaction rate might be equal to K times the concentration of your, of your reactant squared. Now, that's not God-given, but it may fit your data pretty well. Um, equations of state, something like PV equals NRT, so like the ideal gas law. 
ideal gas equation of state. Heat transfer correlation function, so things like MCP times T minus T reference. And other um, relationships like Routes law for va vapor liquid equilibrium, so the partial pressure of component A is equal to your mole fraction in the liquid of that component times its pure species vapor pressure.